Welcome to this very special episode of the League of Melanated Gentlemen podcast. And uh, let me tell you right now, this episode is going to be really different from anything we've ever done. Uh, this is my first time ever doing anything like this. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty excited for it. This has been in the makings for a while now. Uh, we are going to be playing a game called Marvel Multiverse RPG. And I have a group of people with me who... Um, who are willing to take this ride with me. So I am no longer Jordan. I am the narrator. And that will make more sense as we begin our story. But today I have with me, I'm going to go from kind of the order on my screen. Um, we have Luma Prime, played by Ethan. Ethan, tell me about your character, Luma Prime. Uh, Luma Prime, real name, Luma's our. Arcturus uh, hails from the planet Luminaria, um, a world that has been ravaged by gamma radiation and contamination. So he has left his home planet searching out other people to help with his extraordinary abilities. Uh, he's a large fella, uh, 6'4", 250-ish, classic superhero look. Uh, blonde hair, brown eyes, can change it up a bit whenever he powers up, you know, classic Dragon Ball Z type things, but uh, uh, super strength, flying, you know, basic superhero things. Okay, and we'll get into the powers a little later because we don't want to spoil too much, but next character we up, uh, we have Omega, played by Darth David. Tell us about yourself. So Omega is a son of an infamous general, Kree general, named Montag, for all those that are uh, Marvel aficionados. Real name, I'm sorry, Earth-based name, is Calvin. When he was just a baby, his mother fled to Earth to escape the harsh realities of the kree Skorol War. After crash landing in Madripoor, Calvin was raised in the harsh, eat-or-be-eaten criminal underworld, where he used cunning to rise to the top. He's about six foot, 200 pounds. He has black dreadlocks with gold tips. He's known to be cunning. He's known in the criminal underworld as a ruthless mercenary turned hero after being portrayed after a heist. He rocks a nanotech suit with the Omega symbol strapped in gold right in the center of his chest. All right. And last but not least, we have Drake Tungsten, played by Josh. Tell us about your character. So Drake Tungsten is an inventor. Uh, was involved in a lab accident that left him missing his right arm and eye, both his legs. They've been re replaced with bionic parts that he has upgraded over the years to really customize and make his own and kind of does the same with, with gadgets and, and weapons. Okay. Uh, like I said, I am the narrator. Let me give you a little imagery of what I look like. So picture a figure cloak. Uh, he's much in mystery. I am sort of like Marvel's Watcher, but I am the narrator. Uh, so I am the master of stories. I stand tall. I am dressed in robes that seem to shimmer whenever I move. That looks like, you know, galaxy stars. Um, I tell the tales of the past, the future, and the present. Uh, my eyes are filled with wisdom and must knowledge, and I hold the cosmic threads in the existence of my hands. I weave and guide the destinies of heroes and villains alike and the voice that resonates throughout time and space. I am the narrator. I am not the watcher. I'm the narrator. I, I didn't have a cool ending for that one. So <laughs> I, I tried it. I tried it. So yeah, this is, this game is similar to D&D. Um, &D. So if people out there play D&D, &D, they might you know, get a familiar sense of kind of what we're doing here, but this is Marvel's version of it. So it's a little bit different. So today we have a great story and um, I'm excited for it. So without further ado, we're going to we're going to go ahead and slide into our first area. Um, also, there are going to be a lot of keywords that people kind of hear. Um, and as we get the keywords going, um, you will sort of hear you start to hear them, I should say. Um, also, this is our first time doing this. So you might also hear some mess ups, but, you know. That's all right. The, the longer we do it, you know, the better we are. So starting out, uh, are you guys, do you guys see the map? Yep. yep. Okay. 
So uh let me let me get my little let me get my let me get my stuff out. Um so we first appear at our first scene. So we are located in New York. We are at a pier. Um it is the middle of night and there's a reason that these heroes are here. So I'm gonna give a little spear right quick and I'm gonna let you guys kind of introduce, you know, why you guys are here. So it's nighttime in Manhattan. The moon hangs high in the sky. New York may be the city that never sleeps, but down in the shipping ports of the Hudson River, things are eerily quiet. One of your contacts lets you know that a group of smugglers have a shipment stolen with shield tech and they're trying to bring it into the city. At first you wonder if the tip had any merit, but soon enough an unmarked shipping vessel with an engine turned down drifts into Pier 65. The characters, I mean, oh, and carefully settles in. Within a few minutes, you watch the shadows of a group of burly figures emerge. Set ramp, they set the ramp down at the pier, and they begin loading and unloading, um, you know, different items here. So, question: How, how are you guys getting here? Like, what, what are the reasons for you guys being here? So we kind of start in the same order. We introduce each other. So Omega, how did you end up here? I got a tip. My office got a tip <clears throat> down in the deep city of Magipore that Shield Tech was up for sale, and up for grab. Being a mercenary, it's not uncommon for me to be traveling to different cities to collect things for a said bounty, for a said contract. Apparently, Kingpin wants whatever's on this ship, and he's willing to pay a pretty penny to get it. Luma Prime, what are you doing here? Um, I would guess uh, more of happenstance. General nighttime patrols protecting the city, flying through the skies. Uh, you learn to notice nefarious activities. So stop to observe. Okay. Drake Tunstan, what are you doing here? Um, I've, uh, I'm after the tech. So I've also uh, received tips about some of this technology moving in, and uh, I want to get my hands on it, see what they're up to, see what they're making. Sounds good. All right. So you guys are at this shipping container, and you see... Uh, these smugglers kind of doing their thing. They're they're bringing in shield tech. They're moving drugs, and they're also moving a couple other things that you can't quite tell what's going on. So, what do you guys want to do? How do you guys want to proceed on this one? Hmm. Blue oh, Prime. Do you guys want to? Do you rock Overwatch and fly and see how many we're up against? Uh, yeah, of course. Um, I do. Luma likes to keep off the ground. Um, seems to move better that way. Uh, so yeah, just quick fly over the top, uh, trying to stay as incognito as possible, um, and just kind of scout out, see how many thugs and villains and stuff we're we're going to be up against, and maybe path out a point of attack kind of find what we're looking for see if they're more con concentrated in a certain area a certain package anything okay. like that so you fly up and we'll go ahead and proceed to our first check so for people who don't know this check um, the way the marvel system works is you don't have the traditional d20 you have three dice and one is a special specially marked dice and so we're going to roll um, Luma Prime. I'm going to have you check your vigilance against uh, a vigilance check, actually, against it to be the uh, defense of, you know, the, these characters here. So. So the three D6, second, the mm -hmm. middle one being the Marvel dice. Correct. Plus my vigilance score. Correct. Correct. Okay. That is a. One, four, four, so nine on the dice plus three for vigilance is a 12. Okay. 
Um, so you fly up in air and they can't see you. And while you're in the air, you kind of notice that, you know, there are six smugglers uh, moving all their work. Um, you have some messing with the cranes, moving stuff. Uh, you have guys patrolling as well. Um, so you're you're out of sight, out of mind right now. Uh, Drake Tungsten, how do you want to proceed? I want to uh, use a scanner to see if I can get an idea of of uh, where this tech might actually be on the ships or in this dock. So you have a scanner on you? Yes. Okay, let's go ahead and make a, a vigilance check. And it'll be the same for you. So your vigilance. Let's see, see my vigilance is one. Okay, that passes. So, as you're doing uh, your scan, you also notice someone who looks a little bit different um, on the boat. You can't quite tell who the character is, but you can tell that someone is there. Um, so, yeah. Omega, how do you want to proceed? Since Lua Prime has already soared into the air and saw the six smugglers, I'm going to assume he also saw the one on the building, closest to our starting point. I'm going to then trigger my copy ability with Lua Prime's flight to see if I can take out the guards on top of the building to our left. Okay. I guess so. What we have here, so in the in the Marvel game, you have basically your two actions. He can either move or he can take his standard action. And so what he's going to do is actually take his standard action. And uh, yeah, let's see your, if your copy ability works. Can you read for us uh, what your copy ability does? So copy ability is based on concentration, standard action. Uh, essentially, the character will pick one ability score of another character within 10 spaces and duplicate it. They now have the ability score in the place of that ability score in the place of their own with a description of the character just duplicates another character's ability. Since I asked Luma Prime to fly and he successfully flew, I'm not going to copy his ability. Or I guess roll to see if I copy. Okay. Um, what does it tell you? What do you have to roll? It does not. Okay, so that most likely is up to me then. Um, we'll give you a target number of 12 on this one. Okay. And that's a 3d6? Yep. Plus my... And also, don't forget to, since you're using a power, that's 5 on your focus. Um, so your focus is in this game is sort of like your... Uh, your power, so like how much mana you have, um, or um, yeah, that's the best way I can explain. Like how much power you can actually use. Um, so and if you lose all of that, bullets. yep. And if you lose all that, you become uh, that one? not unconscious. Shattered. Um, yeah, you become shattered. Okay, so we'll subtract five from my focus. Roll a three to six. Ooh, so that's a fail. Oh wait, did you add your? Do you got any multiple? Uh, any multipliers? So I rolled a ten. You gave me a twelve. Mm-hmm. And it's a concentration. Actually, on my copy ability, I don't even have a cost for that. Oh, the, uh. Question: Were you doing yeah. copy ability or copy power? Copy, copy power would be to fly, correct? I'm just trying to make sure we're looking at the right thing. Because mm. I know you have both. I thought you had both. Let me see. I think I do have both. If, if, if it's copy power, you should be able to just do it without a check. There is no, like, passing Roll anything, them. especially okay. if it's an ally that's doing it. It's yeah. just kind of like a passive ability that you have. 
Clone uh, moves is different though. I'm not sure about that one. Yeah, clone moves now. cost five concentration or more. Copy ability costs five focus. Oh, so it does cost cost five focus. Yeah. Let's see. But but I believe it's you can just do. I can just do it. Yeah. Yeah. I there's can make an okay. it now. Uh, always the, okay. I see now. Yeah, there's no check for it. See, this is this is why we're doing this. There you go. So yeah, so, you just get roll. it. So I just fly. Yeah. Does that count as you my turn, fly. or do I have a second action? You still have a second action. You can still move. Um, but you guys are not noticed right now. Right now, just letting you guys know as well. Cool. So my second action, I will see if I can try and trigger. Let's see. And I trigger this. So. I want to trigger invisibility. You... Sacrifice another five focus to turn invisible. Okay. Uh, and that's a standard effect. Okay. Um. All right. I mean, you're you're invisible. You don't have to roll or anything for that one to get spotted. Right. And characters must be actively trying to, or to, I guess, to spot me, to make a vigilance check. So unless they're looking for me, I'm good to go. Okay. Sounds nope. good. Uh, Luma Prime, you're in the air right now. What do you want to do? Um. Like Omega's doing here, he sees one. Um, like one guy off by his, himself. Um, we want to kind of thin the herd. So I see him going that way. I would like to fly all the way to the south side where this guy is by himself, by that crane. Okay. And do something similar. Um, so fly down there. I would like to very Batman-esque fly in grab the guy and take him away so like cover like the whole classic grab cover their mouth take them away from the area so there's no screens trying to stay uh, unnoticed for as long as we can okay and that would be your standard action so we need to uh a grab, they need to make a melee, a melee check on the target's melee defense. Yes, sir. And I have a melee score of five plus my dice here. That is a one, four, two, seven, uh, twelve total. Um, and I don't believe I'm going to check my powers and stuff just to make sure. I don't have something that helps me with that. I'm still kind of learning what this guy does. Okay. Uh, you're checking them still, or are you good? Yeah, I'm just looking at my stuff here. Uh, and don't forget, fellas, also with your character sheet, you can double click it to make it, you know, go away for a minute. Yeah. And double click it again if you need your character sheet pulled back up. Okay, so I would get a plus one to my score. Oh, to my melee because it's not an attack. I'm just trying to grab. It. So that's uh, one, what I have twelve. So it would be thirteen instead. Okay. Because I am twenty. Yep, you you got them. So you want to grab them? Tell tell us what you're doing with that again. Um, so it looks like. The majority of the action is happening towards the ship. I would like to grab them and take them towards the, uh, like, warehouse area mm -hmm. and subdue them. Tie them up, leave them on a the hall rooftop, just to get them away from where we're trying to go, what we need to focus on. Okay. So this character is currently pinned then, um, and since he is pinned, he's going to have trouble. So for people who don't know, trouble is when we roll our three dice, we have to re-roll our highest dice. Um, and so that's how trouble works. So he's going to have trouble, and it's going to be on a, a melee attack versus the agility defense. Um, 
but right now, you know, they still do not know what's going on. But I will tell you that the character that is uh, hidden in the background, he is watching and he kind of notices that, you know, the, the guy who's working is missing a little bit. So he's, he's just going to be kind of vigilant. So uh, Drake Tungsten, uh, I'm going to go ahead and have you do a uh, just a vigilance check. So I'm going to have you roll against the ability of defense. So just let's just do a, a vigilance check of 12. So just we'll roll your dice. And if right. you can get to target number 12, we'll see what happens. got an 11 and I have one vigilance so 12 12 sounds good so the I mean the enemies here still don't know what's going on um, but they're becoming a little fishy but Drake Tungsten what's your what's your turn looking like so I ask how how much are the three of us in contact like we kind of showed up like independently right this is you guys Okay. Okay. So, there was no there was no talking about it. I mean, you, you about to say just... we technically never established comms we never... before we started. We just went all rogue, all three of us. Okay. Okay. So, not knowing, it's, I'm also since I'm also aware something's going on out here. I'm actually gonna try and move to uh, to where I can at least see the on ramp of the boat and kind of see what what goes down with the. Uh, everything else around me. Drake, can you hold off until I take out the guard on top of the building before you make your move? Yeah, so I was moving to, to be in cover before I could see. Oh, you're moving to be in cover. Oh, okay, yeah. I got you. I got you. Okay. So your character's going to move to be in, in, under, in cover. Do you want to you wanna move uh, your piece somewhere? Yeah. And we will go to the next Omega. So this is getting tougher and tougher. Time is passing. And the man on the boat is kind of noticing, you know, some things don't quite seem right. So I'm going to have you do a vigilance check. And each time it's going to go up by one. So now I need you to get a vigilance check of 13. So we'll roll the dice. We'll see what we get. Oh, just to see if I'm spotted. Right. Okay. Well, I think I have a buff against being spotted because I'm invisible and in the air. You might be invisible, but, but I'm not. I roll. Yeah, that's true. That's the online invisibility, though. I have to do. I have an edge on agility checks. I have trouble. Enemies have trouble on visual inspects. Okay. So, so it goes up by one. So they have a. They already have a debuff because they have a. It's harder to spot me. I'm not moving yet. So okay, characters must be actively trying to do so and be able to make a vigilance check. So, we'll go ahead and let's. We'll still get. A, let's get a vigilance check. Okay. Roll a 12. And then, and then don't you have, have you should have uh, one more. Uh, do you have any pluses on your vigilance? On my vigilance, I do not. My base score of vigilance is two. So is it 14? Yes. And it's a fa fantastic 14 because he got a one on the middle dice. Yep. Oh, uh, yes. So we have to talk about that. So whenever you hear someone says fantastic, they can either get a fantastic success or a fantastic failure. And that is, uh, we have the dice system. The middle dice counts as the marble dice. If it's a one, uh, the, it also counts as a six. It's kind of weird how it works out. But the one counts as a six. And so this is fantastic. Um, so, yeah, you actually got, got past this. You are still invisible. No one sees you. And you are able to, since you did get a fantastic success, we will let you uh, move a little bit extra than you normally would be able to. So, what do you want to do for your standard action? 
the guys on the roof of the green building and okay. render them unconscious. Ooh, okay. So you're gonna you're ready to make the first move. Okay. So then if you're gonna render them how are you gonna how are you gonna do that? I'm going to do a basic chokehold takedown, that man's Okay, so same for as we did with Luma Prime. So it's going to be uh, for the grab, your uh, melee offense versus their melee defense. Okay. So, maybe... so let's go ahead and roll for that one. Oh, where is it? Uh, 12? Did it not? Did it not roll? Uh, that's like eighteen. Yeah. All right. So I, I so I did it with the the uh, what do you call it? With my actual chart first. I clicked on two for combat, and it rolled all three dice. So yes. Yeah. It rolled five, five, five and five, six. Five, five, six. Plus and my your two melee. Plus my two melee. Yep. So eighteen. Okay. Um. So you you tell me how you're doing this. Since I'm invisible, I fly over behind them, or behind the guard, snatch him up in an immediate chokehold. As he grabs for his radio, I break his hand. And as he passes out slowly, I take the radio and keep it on my person. Okay. And that was, which guy was it? Green building. Can I move my Green character? Man. Yeah. How do I do that? Uh, you need to select the selector on the left and move your character. Okay. Interesting. It just lets me like drag a big ass. If you just uh, click it first, it should pop up like an interface around it, and then you should be able to move it. Okay. Let's see if I can do that though. Yeah, I got you. If not, I got you. Yep. There you go. And you. You want to take the henchmen off of the board since they're unconscious? Or you leave them there. Uh, we will we'll leave him there. He's a, he's unconscious right now. We'll leave him there. Okay. Um, but that's. Uh, and now, uh, since I'm on the top of that building, I've got a perfect view side of the crane on the left, next to Drake, and the guard loading shipment container directly in front. Okay. While still invisible. <laughs> so. Now that we've gone a couple rounds, um, I'm going to make a check with the mysterious character who has not been seen yet. Uh, let me grab him right quick. And he's actually going to do a check of his own to see if he can see you guys. So, oh, let me, let me hide this stuff right quick from y'all. And we didn't notice, like, the quote-unquote, like, boss, right? We just saw the henchman right. around, but we never right. saw you've him only, who was you, in charge. You've only seen the henchman. Okay. But I got but I got a hit when I scanned the ship, though. That um, there is. That yeah. there is. Right. So, we probably should have talked to each other first. <laughs> Let me open this you already, up. If you already took the guy behind the, behind the building... Oh man, I can't tell you that because <laughs> you're away from me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I immediately just flew off. I was like, oh, I'm by myself. It's fine. Okay, so he is going to make a vigilance check, um, and it would be against everyone's vigilance defense. Um, hang on, I'm trying to see if I roll it, will it tell you who he is? Actually, we're gonna make a we're gonna make an executive decision. We're not gonna do it yet. I'm not I'm not ready to reveal who it is yet. Um, okay, Luma Prime, let's go ahead and make a vigilance check for you. It's increasing. You guys have been going for a while. Um, a vigilance check of thirteen to see if you get spotted. Okay. Three, so fourteen. You guys still remain unspotted. Nice. Okay. 
Uh, oh. and you also had this guy. You took this guy off, so let's... Uh, let's yeah, I wanted to fly him away and then come back over the top. Um, and, you know, sneaking around is not really Luma's go-to. So he has seen what he needs to see. He thinks everything can be handled quickly and abruptly. So I want to... Once I take the guy off, fly back up, I just want to land, like, right in the middle of the ship, kind of where the action is, like, the two henchmen up at the front of the ship. Um, just kind of land behind one of them and, you know, kind of announce my presence with some witty one-liner. Um, and Let's hear, let's hear yeah. you, got, you, got a, you got a good one-liner? Let's hear it. Come on. Oh, Lewis. man, I did not prepare any lines. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, something real cheesy and terrible. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Let me come up with something. I got you on the next one. Give me a minute. Okay. Uh, but, yeah, pretty much just land, tell them to, like, you know, the law's here. What are we doing? Why are we doing this, fellas? You know, what's going on? Not necessarily attack anybody. I don't want to, like, mm -hmm land and like punch the guy in the back of the head more of a this is your last chance to give up willingly or things are gonna get rough okay uh and of course the smugglers like it rough um what do you do you actually do you want to do your standard action first i, I keep forgetting that do you want that, so that was your movement i give you your movement do you want to do any standard action or anything um not let me double check again. Learning the character. Let me double check. And make sure I don't have anything. Yep. And interesting don't to do. So you guys, yep, you guys got your standard action or your reaction. You know, your reaction is once per round, um, but also you have your movement as well. I would like to hold my standard action. Okay. If the guy attacks me, like comes at me, uh, then the fight is on, and I would like to use my action to punch said henchman in the face. Okay. Very briskly. Okay. Drake Tungsten, what are you doing? Did we lose him? He's, he's, he's oh, thinking. I'm sorry. I'm, he's oh, thinking. Thank <laughs> Uh, so I'm I'm seeing this go down on the ship. Um, let's see. I would... So I want to see if I can uh, take a peek down and do, is it? Can I can I already see the henchmen that are down farther south by the truck? Like, yep. You you are they, can are they, you can they're see in everyone. plain sight. You, yeah, everyone's out in plain sight right now. Okay. And also, I didn't have you roll because you were already hiding. That's the reason why I didn't have you roll a visionist check. Um, those guys weren't already hiding. All right. Um, so, so seeing seeing the uh, Lumen Prime on the ship now. And seeing that I'm uh, I'm pretty close to the guys in the crane, uh, I want to shoot uh, a stun, like a stunning ammunition at the guys in the crane. Okay. Just to my, I guess, west. So is that is that one of your powers? Uh, so yeah, my my weapon. I've got multiple types of ammunition, so explosive rounds, kind of a Batman or a a, a Hawkeye of of. Uh, I guess uh, weapon ammunition. So I'll choose a stunning round to shoot at that guy. Okay. Uh, you want to read it to us uh, what it does? So or does it does it tell you any specific checks or anything? Uh, no. Okay. So it sounds like you just fired and you hit it. Let's see. What? See what so, do I roll to? Which be attack? Yeah. Hang on. Yeah. What is it called again? Just your stun? Yeah. 
Yeah, it'll be just, it'll be just a standard attack. Okay. Um, so it'll be your since it's a, it's a weapon. So it'll be your melee. Uh, your melee. I say melee. You gotta forgive me, everyone. It'll be okay. your melee versus their melee defense to see if okay. you hit them. So and a twelve. That is a hit. So what happens when you hit him? Just knocks him unconscious. Okay. So this character is uh, just knocked out. You guys are like checking these guys out right now. Um, okay. We have Omega. You are back up. And this is getting increasingly harder, so let's get a vigilance check of 14. Okay. So looks like you have 15? Yep, 15 total. Yeah, you still, you guys are still unspotted. This is this is crazy. I didn't expect because I'm, I'm, at, I'm so I'm clicking the non-combat vigilance check or vigilance button under the ability scores, and that does all the rolling for me with three d six. So gotcha. Yeah, my vigilance, my vigilance is two, six and six, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Ah, oh, does all the math for you. Love that. And I am going to, as I'm on the top of the building, holding the radio. I hear static in the background and I use my heightened senses too to detect our mysterious stranger who's quietly observing from the boat. I can't make him out, but I do know he's there. Okay, so let's um let me grab one thing cuz you guys still don't know who he is. Let me check something because I think since you guys still don't know who he is what are you, do, what are you trying to do against him again so I heard static on the radio mm-hmm. and I can sense somebody's presence on the boat just naturally I don't have any tech for that but my heightened senses too allows me to sense things four times as far away as normal so through the boat I detect a presence but there's still one more guard left so I can't use the radio just yet Okay, and there's no role needed for that or anything? No, it's a permanent permanent power. It's a permanent... Okay. So then I want to actually use... Take movement to the guys in front of the uh, orange connex box since I'm still flying, technically. Okay. And perform a melee yeah. attack from behind with my neural lance. On this unknown character? Yes, the one... Uh, so, fly to the... I guess one, two, three, four, five spaces down, three spaces over to attack the guard from behind with the neural lance, my iconic okay. weapon. Okay, so that's going to be, we'll call it your melee, once again, your melee versus their melee defense. Um, and then you're also going to reveal the character, but let's let's do this first. So let's roll. So go ahead and roll to against their melee defense. What happened to? All right. That is a that's a hit. And so, the where's your damage? Did it show the damage? Uh, fourteen damage. Well, I rolled a fourteen. No. Yeah, so then the damage is the six times two plus two. Yep. Now, okay, I got you. Well, it's just still 14, so I do 14 damage to him with my neural lines. Okay, so then let me... Let me take some of this health down. Hang on, I gotta do some, gotta do some quick math right quick. You know, that's what this game is about. Oh, this, you got no basic math, basically. Okay, that is, uh, you definitely hurt the guy. Uh, he's not quite out. He's not quite down, but you definitely hurt him. And so, since you've done that, now combat begins. So, and then you also revealed this guy. 
Uh, okay. So now that you've done that, you revealed who the big bad is. And you and you guys see everyone sees this happen. He pops out of this room and you notice that a character is wearing a black, you know, kind of jumpsuit looking thing, and then he has a a target on his forehead, and he's kind of maniac, maniac. I don't know. Maniacal. I'm trying to say maniac. Maniacal. Yeah, maniacal. <laughs> he is uh, making a maniacal laugh, and um, he just says, "Game on, fellas!" And you guys, since you know you don't you don't know who this character is, you know it sucks. You guys know who this character is, but you guys don't know who this character <laughs> is, and. uh he just sees you takes the hit on the smuggler and we're about to roll for initiative. So now we're at the point where everyone's in combat. The the jig is over with, you know, the smuggler took the hit, but he didn't get taken out. And so he yells, Hey, we got people here. And so now we're going to actually roll for combat and for turn order. So, Oh, let me reset this one. Uh, All right, so let's start with uh, Luma Prime. Go ahead and roll. We'll see who. Uh, and I'm rolling real dice here. Yeah. Okay. And then on this one, also don't forget to uh, add your initiative. Yeah. So I got a five three five. So thirteen plus my initiative is three. So thirteen. Okay. Sixteen. Sorry. I'm trying to get this turn over button work. I can do this right here, and it should add me to it. Oh, and yeah, I should be able to edit. If you, um, those of you that are using the Roll20 stuff to roll, if you click on your token, like your guy, and then click the Roll button next to Initiative, it should automatically put you into turn order whenever the turn order thing is up. Yeah, so uh, we'll let... Drake Tungsten, we'll go ahead and let you roll. All right. So I've got a 12 total. Okay. So let me change this. Uh, trying, to get, trying to get this guy off. Oh. How did I get you? Oh, you added your... Okay, I see that happening. It should, if you have your token selected when you roll, it automatically puts you into it. Gotcha. How do you take do you know, how do you take uh people off because I got them on there twice? There should be I only seen once on mine, but um there oh, should okay. be like an X on them, like on the left side, like probably where the picture is. It might be hard to see, but you should be able to click there. Okay. Well if you guys don't see it then it's fine. Okay. So Drake I just seen, uh, tungsten. Okay. Uh Omega, go ahead and then I'll have to roll for these other guys as well. All right. Sixteen. Uh, wait, how come your character didn't get that on there? Oh, I do not know. Uh, because you just rolled vigilance, you didn't roll initiative. Yeah, I I clicked the uh, I'm, I've got the uh, character sheet pulled up, and there's just a little roll button with a, a yeah, die. Yeah, in the top left of your character sheet, it should say initiative and a number, and then roll underneath it. Yep, yeah, there you go. There you go. I still didn't add it. Do you have your token huh. selected? I can't actually select my token at all. Oh, oh, well, that's hang on, I got you. There must be a me thing. Uh, um, see, this is this is why. Uh, at turn. Oh, okay, I got you. What or what? What number did you get? Sixteen. 16. All right. So you guys are kind of tied right now. I'm a roll for the smugglers. 
And let's get initiative. Roll. And they're going to be for a group, so I'm going to let them all group together. Um, so that one got a 13. And then I'm actually roll for our mysterious character. Character sheet wants to take a little. Okay, there it is. He, he got a 17. Okay, so I'm actually have uh, Luma Prime and Omega roll again since um, you guys tied. Just do, do it again? Yep. I'm trying to figure out why. Ooh, I got a nine. <laughs> That's not good this time. I got 10. Okay. Let me adjust yours. Drake Tungsten. No, 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 no. Luma Prime got a 10 this time. All right. All right. So we have our turn order. So now we're in the fun part. We are now in combat. So uh, the mysterious character is going to he's going to take a shot right at you know the person who's near him and he is going to use he's actually just going to he's actually just going to you know run up to you and he's just going to straight you know give a good old right hook to the face so we're going to call it you know that's a straight melee attack so it's going to be a melee, uh, my melee versus your melee defense. So let's see what we get. And you're attacking Luma, correct? Correct. Okay. I guess I don't need to roll since my defense is already. Uh, yeah, that hits. That'll do it. I have a 15 on melee defense. Okay, so then we need to roll for damage now. Uh, so I need to pull out just one dice. All right, so I got a five, and then looking for the damage on. Okay, okay, so damage is five times two plus one, so eleven. Okay. And do you have any? Um, it's up to you. Do you want to use any reactions? And so you get one reaction per round. I actually have an ability that lets me have two reactions. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, so first one I'm gonna do, he comes running at me to punch me. I'm standing next to one of his henchmen. I'm going to use what was it called? Skulk. Yep. I'm going to use Skulk and move behind his henchman, and the henchman will take the hit instead of me. Okay. And I can send that so to the chat so everybody can read it. So I'm going to move just behind him as Bullseye comes running up. And I don't get hit, but the bad guy does. Okay, so he's going to take 11 damage. You know, he took that right hook to the face, and he's like, man, that one that one hurt. And he's like, what are you doing, man? That one, why are you hitting me? Um, all right, so next turn is, who was it? It is the smuggler, actually. Uh, let me get this guy's health down a little bit. Uh, you got to put my character right next to him since I, I flew over to attack him. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. I forgot. I got, we got we to get your character moved around. Uh, I don't so know why I can't control him. This must be a me thing. Uh, I gotta, I'll have to look into it in a second. Um, okay, so and you're moving, your guy's moving. Where was that? I went behind him uh, to hit him here? from behind with a sneak attack. No, 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 guy down here. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, went behind him for a sneak attack with my neural lance, iconic weapon. So yeah, that's about where I'm at. Okay, so it's gonna be. Um, the smuggler's turn. 
So we're gonna go with the one that's um we'll go with the one that's right next to Omega. And so they have a move called snap shooting. I think it's name above it. Let's uh Man, we're getting a little getting a little slow on the um... Alright. Yeah, we're gonna use snap shooting. And so if, did we ever figure out how to show Ah, oh, there it is. Okay. So snap shooting is it happens in an instant and the character splits the attack to make a two ranged attacks against separate targets, or they can focus one single attack on a single target. Um make a single agility check and compare it to the target's agility defense. On a success, the target is takes half damage, and on a fantastic success, they take full damage. So I am going to roll to see if I can even hit you. Thirteen. So, mm-hmm. My agility is thirteen. Uh, do you get any any uh, bus or anything? Uh, let's see. Check real quick. No, nope, I don't get any buffs, so we tie on that one. Okay, so a tie is a hit, and so let's see what the damage would be. Uh, let's see. So we the damage is five times. Get back to this character sheet. My character sheet goes kind of slow sometimes. Is that just me? Is that happening to y'all too? And I had to make it a pop out window external. That way I could keep using it. Yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah. That was multi screen. Yeah, oh, maybe I should do that too then. Yeah, and, uh, settings, personalization and display, character pop out window. My character, you said character sheet. Was it that one under? So you go to my settings on the right, the cog, yeah. and then under personalization and display, oh, personalization you get a, display. a toggle check for a character pop out window. Yeah, there's a there's a pop out button on it too in the top left. I see it on the character okay. sheet. Gotcha. Yeah, it keeps I don't know, it keeps going slow on my load up. Um, but I have a way around that because I ha- also have him pulled up right over here. Um, also, I guess and let's see if you, see if you can have access to your character. I don't know why my thing is trying to go slow now. No, sir. Okay. I wonder if I exit the game and come back in. Does it? Are we still at the same spot? Uh, yeah, but hang on. We I got it now. So the damage is five times one plus one, so six. So it'll be six to your health. And then uh, we have two more smugglers. No, yeah, you guys took out four, right? I mean, you I'm sure did. The only the only ones we have are the one that got punched in the face. Yep. And the one that I hit from behind. Okay, so the second smuggler is going to make a check against uh, Luma Prime. He's going to do the same move, uh, snap shooting. So it's going to be, uh, you know, going against your agility defense. Uh, question for you. Mm-hmm. Did the mysterious bad guy he moved over here to us, right? So he was already he was already on the boat. Um Right, but did he stay where his toe Oh yeah, see yeah. He, he, yeah, he, he just stand where he is right now. Okay. Wait, I thought so he moved did, over and tried to punch. How did he punch? How did he punch if he's not over? There? Oh yeah, I'm trip. I forgot about that. Yeah. Let's yeah. let's get him over there. So he should be at Would least you? like right in front of the bad guy. The henchman, yep. Just like yeah. that. Stack. Yeah, he's in between them. Okay, so then let me let me get this one back open, and let's make that roll. I'm gonna just I'm gonna just use just die roller three d six. So thirteen against your agility defense. Uh, the guy next to me. Uh, yep. 
so I have an ability called Brawling that I can use my melee defense for everything. Um, and it is 15. Okay, so that's a miss. And that is the end of their turn. Actually, so for their movement, uh, this guy is actually going to get out of the way. He's going to kind of run back down. He, he's trying to get away from you. He don't want any any problems with you right now. Um, all right. So we have Luma Prime's turn. Yeah. Uh, so mysterious bad guy comes running out after me, swings at me. I move out of the way. He hits his henchman. Um, I would, after moving behind the henchman and he hits him instead of me, snarky comment, you'd think somebody with a target on their forehead would have better aim. And then I'm just going to use another ability of mine called Smash. Uh, Very similar to Hulk Smash. And I will send that to the chat so you guys can read it. Um, But it says the character makes a close attack with an edge. Uh, For this attack, add a plus one to the character's melee damage bonus for every two points of focus they spin. On success, an effective target takes total damage. On a fantastic success, target takes double damage and is stunned for a round. And I'm just going to hit the bad guy that's next to me there. Okay. Uh, I would like to spend... I'm assuming I would need to say how much focus I'm going to use before I actually make the attack. Just right. to kind and of like also, the honor system. And also, you got an edge. So we'll just explain right quick. An edge uh, is the opposite of trouble, whereas trouble, you reroll your highest dice. With edge, um, you get to reroll your lowest dice. So, yes, you have an edge on them, um, and then you can also use the amount of focus you want. So I'm I need I'm taking off the initial five focus to use the power, and then I want to do another. Is there a limit to it? There's not a limit to it. So I'm gonna do like another ten focus for extra plus five to my damage. So I'm gonna do ten more focus. And then I'm going to make my melee attack on him with an edge. That is not great. Uh, three, five, one plus a five. So 14. Um, I'm going to use... do what? Oh, okay. Keep going. Um, question. I can't use the edge to re-roll the Marvel dice, can I? You can. Can. Uh, it's a five. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to re-roll my one. Okay, so I got a four that time. So that is uh, nine, twelve, plus five, a seventeen to hit this cat. And this was against their what? Their melee defense? Yes, melee defense. Okay, it's a, it's a hit. Awesome. And I get to do... Let me check my page. Dice times three plus six plus five. That is a five times three, which is 15, plus my regular modifier of six, which is 21, plus the 10 focus I spent gives me another five, so 26 damage, melee damage to Mysterious Stranger here. Okay. Uh, that was a big hit, but he was able to, you know, withstand it, and he's still going. He's still kicking. Um, and as far as movement, I'm going to stay right there next to him, ready to, ready to go. I'm assuming he's about to punch me back, and I'm okay with that. Okay. Um, he is actually going to... Uh, oh, actually, hang on. I had something too for him. My my character sheet keep not wanting to open up for this guy. I don't know why. Uh, okay, we'll just go to the we'll go to the next turn. So, uh, Drake Tungsten.
What do you so, want to do? I'm going to... Um, run around the uh, super container to, to to attack to shoot both of my, my pistols at the guy on the, that just came off the dock or came off the boat onto the dock. Okay. And so you, is that a regular melee and not a power, right? It's just regular melee? Right, yeah, it's regular melee. Okay. Um, we'll call it against their melee defense. So go ahead and roll. This is my I'm melee roll, right? Yeah. Yes. 13, and it's, 13. it's a hit. And so okay. now you roll for damage. And we'll hear how what happens to him. Which do I, okay, which do I roll for damage? Uh, just roll 1d6. Oh, just 1d6, okay. Five. So, On your character sheet, it should say, like, where you see melee your melee score mm-hmm. on the far right under attack, it should say, like, the DM is for the five that you rolled, and it should be times a number oh, times plus two plus. Number. Yeah, let me... I should roll hit that button instead. If I roll that... There you go. There you go. So, okay. like, a six times two plus two for your melee. Okay, so six times two, 12, 14... And yeah, that is a. Uh, let's hear how you did it. What did you do to him? So I, I come running around the corner of the container, that seeing the guy running off the dock, and pull out both pistols and open up into him. And he definitely took those hits, and he is not getting back up. You you, you laid him down. Please tell me those bullets were friendly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I was gonna say my Luma hears gunshots go off. Uh, I'm, I'm a question for uh, Drake Tungsten. Does it sound like just like a revolver going off? Does it have a unique sound to it? What do we hear whenever you pull the triggers? So these are gonna sound more uh, electronic. So it's still firing a projectile. Um, but um, it's it's noisy and, and makes like almost like a laser sound. Okay, so more laser gun instead of six shooter revolver. More laser sound, but so these are our custom guns that that I built, and uh, one of the Easter eggs built in is they make laser noises, uh, regardless <laughs> of what they're shooting. So they're noisy on purpose, but making a ridiculous noise. Uh, but yeah, like Omega said immediately hear gunshots go off and not all my attention. I have a guy standing in front of me, but I definitely take a look over and see to try to see who's pulling out this, the six shooters out here. What's happening. Okay. Uh, we're back at the top. So it is bullseye turn. Oh shit. Okay, with a mysterious, mysterious character. Mysterious stranger. <laughs> mysterious stranger, <laughs> A. Wait, wait, did we, did we skip my turn? Or... Uh... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah I'm about are. to say, I'm the, la- I'm the last one to move before I go back to Mysterious Stranger, which I now can identify due to my, uh, <laughs> how, what do you call it? Due to my connections, one of my traits, and being my background, being from the uh, underground of Magicor, I recognize him as Bullseye. Okay. Do you want to? Do, is there? Do you want to read off what the trait says? So you said you got it. Okay. Yeah. Let's go here. Uh, you. Character and host. How things are handled on the street. Who's in charge of various criminal enterprises and how to avoid issues with them. So, while fighting, while fighting the henchman in front of me, I make a slight side glance and see a shiny, black latex head covering with what looks like a bullseye medallion. Call out to bullseye saying I knew it was you on that damn boat. To which 
I wonder, can we make Bullseye do a ego check to see if he looks back at me when I call out his name? Uh, we will make a, we'll call it a logic check. We'll see if he logic even remembers check. who you even are. Um, so yeah, let's make a logic check, and it'll be uh, let's see Bullseye if he recognizes you. So I'll do a logic check for Bullseye to even see if he knows who you are. So it's gonna go against your logic defense, which is twelve. All right, uh, let's see. So I got an eight. So he looks at you and says, hey, man, I don't even remember who you are. You must not be that important. Wait, so he lost my defense. Wouldn't that mean he recognized oh, me? Oh, wait. Yeah, if he rolled like a 15 or 13, then I'd be. No oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. I'm an eight. So he I'm said, somebody. <laughs> <laughs> he says the opposite. He says, hey, hey, Omega, like, uh, I remember you from Madripoor. What are you doing here in the in the streets of New York? Whatever you got your hands on, the kingpin paid a heavy price for. You might want to give up now. I would hate to see your hands broken. All right. So what do you want to do on your turn? On my turn, I'm going to take a step back and lunge full speed at the henchman in front of me, triggering my reaction, ram, and you should you should be able to move your character now. I, I fixed it. Oh, um, I'm going to take a step back and then lunge full speed. Triggering my reaction, ram. Character moves their full speed in a straight line towards the target and uses their standard action for additional movement right up to the target. Character can now use their reaction to make a close attack against the enemy they move up to. If the attack is successful, the character takes regular damage from the impact and then the enemy takes double damage. If there's, okay. if there's a fantastic success, I still take regular damage, but the enemy takes triple and is knocked prone. Okay. So let's go ahead and make a check against their melee defense. So I rolled a Eleven, thirteen. What? Five, Twelve. Six, I see it. Twelve. Right. No, that's the damage. I rolled oh. a fourteen. Is that right? I'm doing math. Hang on. on. Six I mean, and five see the is, dice. Six and five is eleven. You don't see the dice? It's no. in the center of the screen. Yeah, I don't know. For some reason I don't see it. So what? What was the middle dice? Five. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, three, five, and six. Is yep. that what the, okay, I see. Equals twelve. Okay. Uh, so yeah, that is a, that is a hit, and the you, the damage is five times two. Is that ten plus that twelve? So he takes twenty four damage, and I take twelve. What other character? Why, why do you take damage? Uh, I'm ramming, so I take normal. I take regular damage from the impact. Ah, uh, gotcha. Okay. So it's like he's sacrificing him his body to do extra damage. Gotcha. Okay, I see. I see it now. I see. So the smuggler takes the hit, and he is definitely struggling, but he is not down and out yet. Man, the smuggler got more than twenty four hit points. That's crazy. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, then I'm going to use my regular action then to, okay. since that was just a reaction, I'm going to use my regular action to attack using my signature weapon. Oh, wait, hold on. Does this mean that I have to use a different signature weapon every time? Is that what that means? Uh, mm -hmm. No. No. Okay, cool. So I'm going to use my signature weapon, which is a Neuro Lance. And I'm going to perform a regular melee attack on him. So what is that? 6, 9, 10, 11, 12. That is a hit. And I do 8 damage. And tell us how you did it. After... 
Let's see. I think that makes sense. Okay. After ramming the guy, I pull up my neural lance, drop to the ground, and do a reverse kick. That misses. I come back up with the neural lance and stun him under the jaw. And he is down and out. He he can't he can't take it. He couldn't take that hit. And so that leaves only, you know, the mysterious unknown character. I think I'm going to, before my turn ends, I'm going to activate a permanent buff I have. You, know, you, exactly. just, you just always have it. Gotcha. Yep, so my health is going to go back up. Equal to my resilience. My resilience is set at three, so I'm going back up three hit points. Okay. Now my turn is over. All right. Who is man? I, <laughs> you want to say who this is? Uh, the mysterious well, character. I've identified him as Bullseye. I shouted out loud. Oh, you, you're you're right. Well, the other people don't know that. I mean, you guys aren't in communication, so uh, these people still don't know who they are. Okay, so the mysterious character. He is going to. He's going to kind of, he's going to try, he's going to make some maneuvers. So he's actually going to skip his, uh, his standard action and use basically a double movement. So he's going to just basically take off running back this other way. And he's going to go behind one of these uh, crates. And so any, since he's hiding for a second, anyone who's make a check on him is going to have trouble. Uh, because he is hiding, and it's going to be the end of his turn. All right. Uh, uh, Luma Prime, you're up. Uh, I'm assuming him moving away from me doesn't... In regular, in general D&D, if someone moves out of my reach, I get to try to hit them. Is that, is that a thing in the Marvel one? I don't remember seeing that. No, I, I don't remember saying anything. Unless it's like a reaction. If you have a reaction that says it, then okay. yeah. That's fine. Yeah. I, I just wanted to make sure. Uh, typically, if somebody turns your back to them, your reaction would be to strike if you had that. Is that a? Do you do you want to do, do you want to try to? We can roll for it. Uh, no, if it's not a, a, a mechanic on there, like it's no big deal. I'll just try to chase him down. Um, you said he moved down and hid. Do I need to make a check to know where he went? Or did yeah. I see him go? Well, you, you we'll say you saw him running. Like you can, you saw him take off running. Okay. But he is hiding between these crates. So if you want to, if you want to try to hit him, then you're gonna have trouble either way. I can go. Okay, um, so with my flight speed, I can move 10 squares, which would get me five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. 10. Um, so you'd get me up next to where he is, uh, which is great. Flight is super good. Um, and then I would like to uh, I'm afraid he's gonna try to run away after what we just saw. So instead of punching him, I want to try to grapple him, grab a hold of him so he can't run away on his turn. okay. Uh, so, just uh, my melee versus his melee defense. Yep. Okay. yep. That is two, six, four plus five. So a seventeen to just try to grab him. Okay. So he has a permanent. Um, he has a permanent buff, basically, They're called evasion. So. The effect is the character can use their agility defense to score against a melee attack too. 
So combining the melee uh, and the agility is going to be uh, 14, 14. Does it add the two together or does he just use his agility instead of his melee? Oh, hang on. Let me go back. So it says the character, let me pull it up too on the compendium. It's called Evasion. Yes, so the character can use their agility defense score against melee attacks too. So it just it only gives an additional so not their defense, just their uh the attack. Like so the agility defense score added on to their defense uh score. Okay. Is that cool. the way I read is that the way I read it too? Uh, agility defense score. Works for me. Yeah, so Either way, you got and what did you get? Uh, 12, 17. Uh, we actually tied, so that is a hit. Okay, awesome. Um, yeah, I used all my movement to get here, so I can't like drag him anywhere or anything. I just want to hold on to him. Gotcha. So he's grabbed and, right now. Yeah, hold on to him and say, You're not getting away that easy, and just hold. Use my strength to keep him there. Okay. Um, let me make sure. So the pin character has trouble on melee. On melee. Oh wait, you have to re-roll your. Uh, I forgot you have trouble. Even yeah, if I got up next to me. Ah, oh, uh, never mind. It wasn't an attack. You wait, wait, wait. You didn't make an attack. Sorry, you just grabbed him. Yeah. Um, I can re-roll. Okay. The highest dice I had was a six. So should I re-roll the six? No, no, I, that was an attack. Um, that's what it is. It's fine. Uh, but is this a, a pin character has trouble making melee and agility checks and cannot move at all? Uh, anyone making an attack against an entangled character has trouble. If the attack against the intended target fails compared to the same attack against the agility target's defense, it hits them instead. So basically anybody who attacks the unknown character has a potential to hit Luma Prime. Yeah. I'm okay. Uh, with that. But if you don't care who you hit, then you know, you know, go for it. Um, but now it is. Uh, Drake Tungsten? Did I get it? Oh, I feel like I got out of order. Yeah, I think Drake goes before I do. So if yeah, you want to. I had to fix it. But go ahead, Drake. All right. Um,. So I want to move on to the ship and see if I can find this uh, shield tech. Okay. So let's you can move on to the ship and let's uh, let's do a logic check to see if you can uh, uh, find it. All right. And so you'll just need a target number of twelve. Twelve. And, hey. and a 12. Okay. So you are, you search through the ship and you actually come across uh, some, some declassified shield tech. So there's a brand new shield weapon um, that has been stolen from shield. And so this is some of the weapons that they were transporting. And you can now have, you're now in position of this, this uh, prototype shield gun. All right, and then so where where are you moving out on the ship? You just you just on it injured. Oh, I see. You. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I just, yep. Luma. No, no, no. Sorry. Uh, Omega. I'm going to fly. I see L Luma Prime to my left, holding Bullseye. I see Drake to my right. Investigating the ship, taking the. I guess he found the tech. You didn't take the tech. You found the tech. Is that right, Drake? Right. Yeah. I'll, so far, I've just found the tech. So I'm going to use the ability of flight. Fly onto the ship. Straight line, and use my heightened senses too. My permanent buff. 
to sense things and I find a manifest showing where the parts were going and where they came from and I take it upon my person and then I'll end my turn regaining more health also within your heightened senses you find the manifest and you also find basically a list of you know items that they were uh, kind of transporting and you know taking you also find three civilian names on there and you don't know who the civilians are you don't know what the names mean but you just find some names there all right uh bullseye's turn uh, so he's still grabbed. I need to make a check to see if I can even break free. So I'm going to make a check against your melee defense. Melee defense. Got a nine. That is not good enough. I got so a 15 he's... for my melee defense. <laughs> so he's he's just still stuck. He's still He's just trying to break free, and he just can't seem to break free. I believe you can use reaction to try to escape as well. So a character can get two chances on each turn to try to break out. You can use an action and a reaction to try to escape. Okay. Oh, good point. Yeah, because... Yeah. Uh, I'll actually... I'm not going to use that reaction. I'll wait. Because you okay. only get one reaction per round. Correct. Yeah, I'm going to wait. Okay. Um, all right. Now we're back in the right order. Drake Tungsten. Um, so, yeah. So I'm going to take the shield weapon and move down the the west side of the ship to try and catch up with these other two figures that are down there. Okay. Uh, oh wait, I forgot about that far. And then you don't ha- are you not making any attacks or anything, right? No, no, not making any attacks. Okay. Um also did you did you take the weapon or you ju- or you ju- just leaving it there? No, I t- I'm taking the weapon. Okay. Or I I had I took the weapon. Okay. All right. We got uh Luma Prime. Um, okay, so I already have the villain grapple in my grasp. Uh, because I am mighty, I am considered a size bigger than what I normally would be, aka I'm just really strong. Um, I would like to take him my full movement speed. Uh, well, actually, before I do that, can I ask if I do I notice? the other two guys on the ship like looking through the crates and the yes. cockpit or whatever yes. you call it you, you, can, you can see them heading your way okay. do I would I know that they are like good guys like, no, do you guys I know who they are do I know you guys, didn't, here, you guys like, didn't talk about any of it the hell? okay so we haven't met before but I see them rummaging around and stuff um, yep being a heroic, which is one of my traits or tags or whatever, my main thing here is to stop the bad guy. So I'm not worried about them searching through crates and stuff. I am. I have the villain apprehended. I am going to finish that job. Uh, is there anything around that I could use to restrain the bad guy like time up are there any chains or anything around uh, ropes let's uh let's uh let's make a logic check for that then okay i can do that my logic and is not it, good and we'll just give you just uh this is uh 12 and i believe i have a power for the logic as well but let me see i think it's just defense though Uh, yeah, so that's just logic attacks. So I just have to use my regular logic, which is 
I may be strong, but I'm not smart. <laughs> that is um, one five six minus three. So, well, a nine is all I have on that. So you looked around and you couldn't find anything to kind of subdue him with. Okay, um, I'm going to keep a hold of him then and pull him off the boat and fly out into like just the open area in the docks over here. Okay. And I don't, you may check your stuff. I don't believe he can stop me because of how strong I am. But you may double check on your end and see. That's something. Uh, Let me, I, I know what I can check out. Let's go to your size chart. Um, I am average size, but because I'm mighty, it counts me as the next size up. Um, and then under movement, it says a character can pick up anything their own size or smaller. Um, oh yeah, you're mighty. I know. I know where, I know where we're talking about now. Yeah, he can't. He can't break out right now. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, so but I'm just going to take he, him out into the open. Um, try to talk him into giving up. Uh, and that's that's honestly all my turn. I'm not trying to keep beating up a man that's lost. He has lost the fight. It is over. Give up okay. now. <laughs> okay. So we are we are at Omega, Omega's turn. I see Luma Prime in the center of the docks. I have what I came for. So I fly, I use my movement to fly over to face off with Bullseye. And I want to use a logic check due to my. Uh, let's see, what is it? My leverage trait? Character is good at figuring out what people want and using it against them. That I have an edge on a logic check to investigate people, and an e- and on ego checks to persuade people that I've investigated. So I fly down to Bullseye, being held by Luma Prime, and confront Bullseye. What's on the damn ship? And then I guess what we do a logic check to see what he tells me. Yep. Yep. So this is not. Are we still in combat? Yeah, we're still in combat. Okay. I think this is just a score, not necessarily an attack. So we're going to do it this way. Okay, so that's a 15. Okay. So, yeah, that that hits. And so uh, let me check out one more thing trying to see does he have anything he can do okay so being the crazy guy that you know bullseye is he's going to he's telling you that you think you know who i am but you really don't know who i am and he just laughs in your face and that's all you're getting out of him because I used my movement and my action on a logic check, I think that ends my turn. Yep. Uh, so, it's going to be Bullseye's turn. So he's going to try. He has to try to break free. He's he's struggling here a little bit. All right. So we'll make a check against your melee defense. Uh, that's thirteen. I got oh, be, oh, yeah. I keep forgetting. I kept forgetting to add his. Uh, oh, even with that, it's only. It's only additional one. So 14. Okay. He's going to actually go ahead and try again for the second time. He has to, he has to <laughs> break out. So let's make another check. And that is still not enough to get out. Strong. So that's, yeah, that is the end of his turn. All right. Drake Tungsten. All right. So looks like those guys have that mysterious dude under control. I'm going to see what this weapon actually does. So I've got I'm a gear I have gearhead trait 
Um, so I have an edge on logic checks to figure out how any machine works. Okay. Uh, so you just automatically get to know how it works, right? Yep. Okay. So you have the uh, shield proton la- uh, proton prototype laser. So the prototype laser is an experimental rifle that can deal massive damage, but it ended up being too bulky for con- conventional field use. So a stockpile of weapons was recently stolen and made their way into the hands of the criminal organization. So this weapon actually ignores single rank uh, damage reduction. So uh, what that means is some characters have damage reduction and this completely ignores that. Um, And of course it has the typical range of 20 spaces or 100 feet. What's it called again? Uh, The shield prototype laser. Oh, it should look at so, and then what do you want to do? You still have a movement left? Um, yeah, I want to go ahead and, and, and move off the ship. Okay, which way do you want to go? So, I'll head, um, I'm going to go back up the way I came up the, that north ramp. Okay, you can go ahead and head down. And then we will go on to Luma Prime. Um, with myself being a hero of the city, would I have a way to like contact the authorities to be like, hey, like call the cops type thing? Do we have like calm pieces in our ears or anything like that? As far that's, as that's like good. just general superheroing, I mean that's what you would have coming into the battle. So, yep. So let's uh let's make a logic check, and we'll give it a target number of fourteen. So this one's going to be a little bit more challenging. Hmm. I didn't get it. Yeah, my logic's terrible. Um, uh, I got it like a. So, so yeah, you tried to make the call. The call wouldn't go through for some reason. Seems like uh, comms and outside communication has been a little bit jammed. You don't know why, though. Okay. Um, I guess I just need to knock the dude out. Um, so, yeah, I guess I will just uh, just melee attack this dude, like choke him out, try to finish him off. I don't know how hurt he is or anything, but um so while I have him grapple, just like bear hugging him, I'm just gonna headbutt the shit out of him. Make a okay. melee attack. So it'll be against my melee defense. Yes, Uh, 16. Um, let's see. Um, you're looking at my permanent. I can use my agility defense. I mean, my agility as well. Uh, that is actually a miss. And so, he is going to use his reaction. Um, oh, actually, I'm, I'm still, I'm still grappled, huh? Yep. Yeah, he used his reaction yeah. to try to break out. Yeah, so I'm using my reaction to try to break out. Actually, I used my reaction last round. Oh, this was... You used it on his last turn, time. which was at the start of this round. Oh, okay, here we go. All right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I guess that's... Oh my gosh, I'm not, I'm not breaking out of this. <laughs> he is... You are not letting go of this dude. Uh I would like to ask the other guy standing in front of me, who I guess we haven't met, so I don't know it's Omega, but I'm talking about Omega, who came over and addressed the mysterious bad guy, who I still don't know who he is. Um, I would like to ask him whose side is he on? Luma it's Prime. Very heroic, like, I'm trying to stop this guy. Like, are you you gonna help? 
Are you not going to help? What What are you got going on here, bud? Who I am is of none of your concern. <laughs> but on this instance, we are on the same side. This guy that you're holding is Bullseye. Infamous hitman. Gun for hire. I feel the sentiments. But he's at the wrong place at the wrong time today. Not to worry. Looks like you have a good grasp on everything. <laughs> Zingers. I like a good zinger. Um, okay, in the most stereotypical, like, cheesy superhero way, like, just, I reply back, we, we need to get him into the right authorities, the hands of the right authorities. And while I'm just, like, holding him and he's, like, squirming and trying to get out, <laughs> I'm just holding him there. <laughs> Give me a second with him before you take him to the boys in blue. I need to figure out who's on this list. Okay. Uh, it is now Omega's turn. And also, like, I, my turn's done, but I would like to pay specific... Whenever he says, like, this list, like he's trying to get information, I know I'm a dumb idiot, pretty guy. I want to do my <laughs> best to pay attention to what's being said and try to keep <laughs> up. It could be too many words for me. We'll see. But I'm going to do my best to really focus, not get distracted <laughs> by the pretty birds flying, and see what's happening. You'll put your listening ears on. Yeah, exactly. Okay. As, I, as I stare at Bullseye, I hold up my neural lance, which I got to do a narrator, a narrator check because the neural lance throughout my thorough, thorough investigation of all Marvel lore. I found the weapon, and it is the weapon that belongs to my father, but the description of the ability of the weapon is nowhere to be found on any Wikipedia site or comic book reference. So I'm going to assign it a power if you are okay with that. If not, I will dilute the power down to one that you will accept for this story. Let's see if you are smart enough to kind of figure out your own weapon. So let's give it an ego check. Actually, what? Hang on. What was ego again? It'd be a was logic like check. Smartness. Okay. okay. Yeah. So it'd be a logic check, but I also have the trait tech reliance, and then, um, what do you call it? I also have the power iconic weapon. So obviously it's in my possession, and I rely on technology. So I think. It doesn't specifically say it, but does that not give me a buff with my own weapon? Okay, well, let's let's give a let's do a, a logic check with an edge then, since you kind of know your weapon, and so we will give you a um, a check of fourteen. And I hit. Or just a, just a little challenging. I got a total of fourteen on my logic check. There you go. So. The Neural Lance, a Kree weapon that specifically renders its target dazed and susceptible to investigation. Oh, I'm sorry. Dazed and mentally weakened. Put it that way. Dazed and mentally weakened. But I need two successful melee attacks to get it to work. Basically, I got to hit you with the thing twice to make it go dumb, bum bum in the brain. Okay. So I'm going to use my melee attack on him to see if the neuro st the neural staff hits him okay so melee attack 5 4 is 9 10 11 11 is the total for 6 damage if it hits that is not a hit um i figured yeah you does are, he have uh, what does pin do to him? Doesn't he have uh, like, trouble or something like that? Yeah, let me see pin. Well, let's see. Oh yeah, yeah. So he's technically grabbed right now. Um, so neither the so because you're super strong, you can move. But technically, when grabbed, neither the grabbed character nor the grabber can move unless they can carry the other person. So you can't. You can let go at any time if you want, but. That other character must escape to be free. Yeah, and then anyone making an attack against entangled characters has trouble. If the attack against the intended target fails, compare the ah, same yes. attack that to trouble. Yeah. yeah. So I knew there was something that happened while I had him grabbed. 
I couldn't remember what Yeah, it so and since you miss, yeah, you're gonna hit you're gonna end up hitting him. Uh him as in Luma Prime. Damn it. <laughs> Even if it's below my defense as well. Oh, is it below yours too? Yeah, it shouldn't do anything to him. Yeah. My my defense is fifteen. Okay. So yeah, I mean you swung and you hit so tell me what happened there when you when you hit him. I reach up to press the neural lance underneath Bullseye's chin. He quickly dodges, and I end up striking the chiseled chin of Luma Prime. <laughs> the crimson the chiseled chin. The chiseled chin of Luma Prime. The, the eyes, my eyes just kind of glow a little bit whenever I get hit. And they, like, like my eyes and, like, the veins you can see in my hands whenever I take a hit, you see them glow and then kind of dampen back down to, to just the regular glow that you see. Calm down, Flyboy. I didn't mean to hit you. <laughs> Hold this man a little tighter next time and we can get this thing over with. Okay. Uh, so it's Bullseye's turn. One of the top of the next round. Let's uh, <laughs> let's see if my guy can escape. He is, he is struggling over here. All right. So we got a five, two, and four. Yo, I am not. <laughs> he is not having a good time right now. He is not escaping. So he's going to go ahead and use this reaction. He has to. He has to try to escape. That don't do it. You finally got to do it. Because I got to do it. All right. So he he finally breaks free. So he kind of you know uses his head and he head butts you backwards. You know, right into the face. And he was able to let go. And uh, so I use my standard. I use my reaction and my movement. Uh, yeah, he's going to cut. Yeah, he's going to try. He's going to just go ahead and just he has to get out of this situation. So he's going to he's going to run right next to this, uh, this crater, but not crater dead crate. Okay. Uh, Drake Tungsten, you're up. All right, so let's see. I'm going to, uh, yeah, take a shot with my rifle at Bullseye. I'm sorry, at this this guy <laughs> in black who's clearly. <laughs> Clearly has a target on his forehead. Clearly has a target <laughs> on his forehead. Okay, so you're gonna take a gonna take a shot. Is that just like your regular melee, like no power or anything, right? Um, yeah. Where well, you, I, I've got, that? I have yeah. accuracy too. Okay. Not, which is a permanent. Um, but since it's a, especially with a rifle, would it be in um, uh, agility? So it's gonna, yeah, it's gonna be my agility. Uh, Character has plus two to their agility damage multiplier in the game, plus two agility checks and stacks. Yeah, so you're just gonna be against my agility defense. Just kind of see if you can kind of like, you know, move out of the way. And so. so uh, oh, you did get you did get a six on the marble dice though. So does that eight? Eight, yeah, eight. So that is a fantastic failure. You got anything else uh, that kind of helps out? I thought getting a one on the dice made it fantastic. Oh yeah, sorry, I was looking at the wrong one. Yeah, yeah it's right. backwards. So you I just, don't understand yeah. why it's that. Yeah, way. it does feel backwards. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's, this one's just a straight up miss. Um, straight up miss. All right. And um, actually, Bullseye has that, a reaction uh, to. I'm, I'm gonna make sure that added so. I've got plus two to my agility. Oh, never mind. That's to the damage multiplier. Um, and again, plus two bonus on agility checks other than attacks. Plus two agility damage multiplier. Yeah. Okay. Let me, All right. Let me so, back yeah, I missed. Yeah. So I mean, hey. So tell, tell me what happened when you missed. You just straight up missed, huh? Uh, I yeah, straight up missed. Hit the container. 
behind him. And he immediately just laughs at you and says, you thought you were Hawkeye or something? Get a better shot. But with you hitting, you just said that you hit the crate behind him. You start to hear screams coming out of the crate and you just hear, you know, people yelling help. So, all right, uh, Luma Prime. Uh, I'm assuming I would hear the people screaming as well. Yep, you guys are all within earshot, so you guys all heard the yells. My focus immediately moves from mysterious baddie to people yelling help inside the crate. Um, so I want to look to my new friend that I just made, a.k.a. Omega, who I don't know his name yet. Um, <laughs> I look to him and say, go get your information. I'm going to help the people. And I want to fly to the door of the crate and try to, like, I'm assuming it's locked. Yep. So if it's locked, I want to try to just break it open, break through the lock, open the doors, and get the people out. Okay. Um, you're pretty strong. So it'll be, it'll be a 12, so that it'll be just kind of be routine for you. Um, for a, so it'll be two. just a melee check? Yep. Yep. Okay. Five, fourteen. You got it. So tell tell me what happens uh, when you open up this thing. Tell us. Uh, let me see if I can get these guys to. Yep. All right. Uh, so yeah. I catch a fancy spear-looking thing to the jaw. Next thing I know, mysterious baddie has broken free. He takes off running. I see a laser shot come by. I hear screams for help, fly over, just one quick movement, sling the doors open. Uh, what do I see inside? Like, what kind of conditions do I see inside the crate? So it's just a normal empty crate, um, but you see three people who are in there, and they run out screaming, you know, thank you for helping us out. We were ambushed in the city and kidnapped, and they, you know, they thought they were about to be sold off into a life. You know, not meant for them. Okay, but they look like New Yorkers. Like, they're yep, on their they're way just, out, not their way in. Yep, they're just, yeah. Okay. Um, so I open the door, uh, tell them, like, come with me, we're going to get you to safety, and, like, bring them out and lead them, like, south away from the direction that Mysterious Batty was going to go. Um, if any of them look hurt, I just kind of scoop them up and take off with them and just move okay. them back down like to towards this other like loading zone down here that kind of stuff okay and because you did that out of danger because you did that you know you rescued these people you actually just earned a point of karma so karma can be used at any time um rank two you guys have two karma but you can gain more than two and karma you can re-roll any dice if you feel like you need to re-roll or if you need an edge um you can save before the turn and you know that's how you use karma so good job for you free saving like yep. at the end of the day if you don't use your extra it just disappears yep. right it's either you use it or you lose it okay awesome um so yeah i've went from hug the bad guy mode into usher the poor citizens along mode trying to make sure while keeping an eye making sure mysterious bad guy is not focused on the people if he turns to try to attack them i would like to step in between uh but my focus is on the people now not the bad guy okay omega i'm going to first Use the trait connections to go ahead and use an ego check to see if I can go ahead and call my employer for a helicopter evacuation. Okay. Uh, we'll give you a target number of 12. 
And then let's see. I wonder, can I lower your target number with my black market access? Is that just a tag? No, nah, tags tag. don't really do anything. No. Nah. Okay. So we're doing a uh, ego check. Yep. Hey, I still hit it. There you go. So let us know how you try to call. Hearing the screams, I, re I use the earpiece that I brought into battle with me to contact my evac plan saying that I need a helicopter at the docks. Looks like we found our missing cargo. To which I hear back from the radio. Clear to go. What about the assailant on the boat? To which I'm confused about what assailant on the boat. Apparently, I went into this mission not knowing anything, but my employer knew everything all along. Okay. And I assume that, that, that Hilo is taking out the civilians? Yep. Okay. Um, all right. We're back to the top. So, Bullseye's turn. He needs to... He's about to, about to be somebody's worst nightmare. Um, let's go ahead and... He's going to run... He's going to run directly at Drake Tungsten. He is going to actually let me see. Yeah, he's just, he's just gonna run directly at you, and you guys are just gonna have a good old fashioned fisty cups. So I'm gonna attack just my regular melee against your melee defense. So let me get the roller out. Twelve. My melee defense is 12. So that's a hit. So I'll roll for damage. So that'll be one. So one times two. Oh, wait. Yeah, one times two, two, then plus one, three. Wow. That is, uh, that is that. That is that. <laughs> so that'd be three. That's three. <laughs> yeah, three points of damage. All right. So that's my movement and my standard action. All right. Go ahead, Drake. Uh so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna punch right back at this guy. Okay. Be melee. So melee. Yep. So we're the the thir thirteen. Yep, thirteen the, and oh, and yeah. So you got anything else? Oh no, say so yeah. And I rolled the uh, fantastic. Two. Or wait, how do you know? I see the two, the three. Because uh, the, the middle, the, the middle one's the the, the Marvel. Oh, it's the yeah. M. If it shows M, that means it's a, a one, so it's fantastic. Gotcha. Yeah, that one. Yeah, so that's the so it's Edge technically. So was that six, nine, ten, eleven? So that's still not enough, right? That uh, that right? No, he's got thirteen total. It says yeah, it tells you all the yeah. whole. Oh, I yeah, see thirteen. 13 okay. Total. Yeah, so it's okay. thirteen, and it does fourteen damage. Um, unfortunately, that is not enough against Bullseye, so that is a miss, oh. even with the Fantastic. Um, but with you gaining Fantastic, we'll give you an edge on your next roll. And he actually has a, a reaction, and he's going to use his Point Blake parry. So, for some reason, it, my, my character, she don't want to pull up no more. I don't know what happened. I would, I would drop him the thing. Um... But anyway, so it says an enemy within two spaces misses an attack against this character. So that's it. It happens in an instant, and it costs us. It costs him. It costs him five focus. 
Um, it says the character make a ranged attack against the enemy who missed them. If the attack is a success, the enemy takes regular damage. On a fantastic success, the enemy takes double damage and bleeding. So Ooh. I'm going to roll for that one. So they could be against your, uh, we'll call it your ability, your, not ability, agility, since I'm trying to, you know, take that, take that hit back at you. Let's see if you can dodge it. Uh, so that's an eight. I've got ten. So that is a miss for me. All right. Uh, so you have your movement. Do you want to move or anything? Um, no, no, I'm not going to move. Okay. Luma Prime? Um, I would like to direct the citizens here into that other, that warehouse that I'm next to. They are, they've already been, they've already been heloed out of there. They're out so of they're, there. They're out of here. Okay. Yeah, perfect. let me go ahead and get them off. Uh, so I would like to refocus on bad guy. That seems to be doing some human trafficking. We look down upon human trafficking over here. Um, let me read this rant thing. I don't know why my character sheet is not open no more. The character moves in full screen. Did you use a pop out screen? Yeah, I think I got it now. I don't know what was going on there for a minute. Um, can I get to him? That is the question. Let me to him. Oh, I can, I can. So I am going to turn my attention back to Bullseye. I mean, Mysterious Stranger. Turn and fly full speed at him. And I would like to, like, punch him into the forklift that's on the other side of him. Whether I have okay. to like grab and throw him or just punch him into it, doesn't matter to me. Man needs to hit the forklift. Okay. Uh, so I'm assuming that is uh, just a melee. It'll be, for me. Yep. Okay. It gets my melee defense. Uh, yeah. Well, plus five, seventeen. That's definitely a hit. Uh, and then I get to roll some damage. Four times three is twelve, plus six, eighteen uh, damage. Just punch him right in the side of the face. I believe you also. Let me check one thing. You punched him right into the forklift, right? Yeah. If possible, I want to knock him into it. Um, if I didn't roll like high enough to hit him that hard, that's totally fine too. But I would like to send him into the seat of the forklift. Let's launch him into it. So you're going to get plus one to your damage multiplier. So... Oh, nice. Redo uh, that math and give plus one to that damage multiplier. So sixteen plus six is. Wait, what's sixteen plus six? Twenty-two. Yes. Yeah. So twenty-two damage instead of eighteen. Yeah. Okay. So he gets knocked into it, and uh. That one hurt. So he he took that one, but he's still he's still on he's still standing, but he definitely just went prone uh, from being hurt by that. Um, and so what prone is, uh, I believe I have to use one of my actions to even stand up. I think it's like just part of your speed, like one space of your movement speed. Uh, so a character is on the ground; they have trouble on all melee attacks. Uh, people making close range attacks on this character have an edge. So whoever attacks me has an edge if his melee, and I have trouble. And then ranged attacks against a prone ca character has trouble, and it caused a prone character one space movement to stand up. Okay. 
All right. So we got Omega. So <clears throat> after rescuing the traffic hu- or soon to be traffic humans, I'm going to fly since I haven't lost that ability yet. Straight to Bullseye, who's on prone, and use my neural staff to do a melee attack. And since he's prone, I get an edge. Right. So I'm going to do a melee attack with the edge. Edge gives me six. So you can re roll your lowest dice. Right. You need to. So on the. He re rolled the two. Yeah, so oh, on the, okay, I see it now. Yeah, I rolled the I rolled the first one, six two four, gave myself an edge, which gives me a total of six and six twelve. Sixteen? That's a hit. And then I guess a total of fourteen damage. And that counts as one of the two hits needed to make this man uh, suffer paralysis. Okay, so I took 14 damage. And then you said oh, he's paralyzed? No, he needs one more hit from me. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a two hit. Two hit before you're paralyzed. Okay, so yeah, he he took that hit, but he's still, you know, he's still prone right now. He's still kicking. And then, so now we're back up to Bullseye, so... Man, he is in a tough situation right now. Um, He's going to try to fight it out, though. I'm going to take an attack on Omega since he just hit me. And so I'm just going to use my melee attack against your melee defense. So I'm going to use one of my reactions to move in between my new good buddy Omega and Bullseye. How amazing, because I was about to use one of my reactions to move behind you. <laughs> I get two of them, so let me do the first one. I got so you. you were going to do interpose, right? Correct. Which is the opposite of skulk, which is what, you <laughs> what I was about to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I so behind I, the tank. Yeah, exactly. And the 17 definitely hits me, because my defense is only a 15. But I just step in between and just wear it to the chest. And like, I'm good with it. All right, so then I'll roll for damage. 17 hits. Uh, So we got the 6 times 2, 12 plus 1, 13. Don't don't forget to heal yourself after this turn. Yeah, I have healing factor. I'm continuously adding health points back to mine. Yeah. Um, Uh, Yeah, so I take the damage to the chest but really just kind of give him a grin. Like, I mean, that's a salt piece of salt in the ocean to me. That's nothing. I got HP to spend. Okay. And he's going to stay right there. He's he's in the battle. He's in the midst of the battle. Uh, Drake, you're up. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm, I'm going to attack. Maybe attack... Uh, Stranger again. Okay. So melee against my defense. <laughs> Damn, bro. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm not uh, having a good day. And so, that's a yeah, I, I rolled a ten. And yeah, you missed, and so he's gonna he's gonna re- use his reaction. He's gonna point Blake Perry again. He just looks at you. And he's like, "Wow, okay, you want to you want to do that?" And so he, let's see if we can. I'm gonna spend five more po- points of focus. And I'm gonna use my other reaction to step in between. Okay, so let me roll. Let's see if we can get it. It's a nine. That one really does just glance off. Just nothing. <laughs> that so I let it. He hits me in the chest on the first one. He turns and swings at the other direction. I just reach out and grab his arm and just hold his arm. Bulls, I just laughs maniacally. All right. So, uh, so that was Drake Luma Prime. 
And now, with said arm firmly in grasp, I'm going to smash this dude as best I can. Do you uh, have the reaction to grab him? Or did you just grab him? No, I, that's just flavor. I didn't use interpose just, again for my other right. reaction. Gotcha. Um, but because he completely missed, I just said I grabbed his arm. So yeah, I don't really I have him grappled. It's just. I was following. I was following. Yeah, just flavor. You know, acting like a badass. I don't get to do that. <laughs> um, I am going to use my power that I used earlier called Smash. Uh, I get to spend five focus, and then for every two more focus, I get to add extra damage to my attack. Um, so I'm going to do minus five to do it. And then I'm going to do for every two, so like 16 more focus. Actually, no, we need to end this. I'm going to do 20 more focus. So that gets me an extra 10 damage no matter what, if I hit. Um, okay. So... Melee against your defense here. Uh, 11, 15 plus 5. So a 20 to hit him. That's a hit. Okay, and then I'm going to roll damage. That's 4 times 3 is 12, plus 6 is 18, plus another. How much do I get? I forgot what my own thing is. Plus one for every two. And I did 20, so another 10 damage. Four times three is 12, 18, so 28 damage uh, to Mr. Mysterious Stranger here. Okay. And tell us how you did it. That's a hit for sure. Oh, yeah, where it says hit. So tell me what happened. Um, Like like he's done? Like he's down? He's, he's down. Okay. So... First interpose, where to the chest. He goes to hit Drake as a reaction. I catch his arm, snap it, hitting it up from the bottom, snap his arm, and tell him, oh, I need to work on my one-liners. Uh, <laughs> uh, so snap his arm, give him a, uh, it looks like your aim was off tonight. Because nice. Omega told me he was bullseye. So it looks like your <laughs> aim was off tonight, bullseye. And like, okay. he drops to his knees holding his broken arm like he's done. Okay. And so actually, when you did that last move, you actually ripped his arm completely off, revealing circuitry inside. And out of nowhere, gas just starts coming out of uh, bullseye's body gas just starts coming out of the other smuggler's body. It's like a it's like a pinkish gas that starts to kind of go over the place. And then kind of over a uh, like a megaphone or like an intercom type thing, you hear, uh, bravo, my friends. You've already you're already a winner. You can you courageously stop the common criminal crooks from unloading uh, their criminal cargo and keeping the city safe way. Good job, guys. Uh, truly, you are the kings of the urban jungle. But now we must see if your skills extend to even more, shall we say, primitive location. And as you guys are breathing in the gas, you guys are becoming more drowsy. And you guys actually get knocked out and you guys are passed out. And you just at the last second, you see a mysterious guy uh, in an all white tuxedo. And you guys, mine just goes blank from there. So Ooh, spooky. That is how we're going to end this first episode. Hey, I like that so, a lot. Yeah. That's yeah. a great, 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 great little cliffhanger right there. Because if he wasn't down, I'm about to copy moves and <laughs> double down on what Blue <laughs> Prime was about to do. So, oh, you about to smash? So am I. <laughs> this man is. I nuts. may not be able to do a lot, but I can smash like crazy. <laughs> yeah. That so that was an exciting uh first episode and hopefully I mean people listening to this this was our first go around ever uh yeah. none of us have really played D and D except for Luna, Luma Prime um but everyone else this is our first time so of course we're gonna get better at um you know everything and yeah. uh yeah oh, hopefully yeah. people enjoy this. 
thank you guys for playing with us this episode. And of course, we'll be back uh, with another episode. So until then, see you later.